Prostate cancer is common, very common. In fact, most men, if they live long enough, will develop prostate cancer, but it won't necessarily kill them because it's usually slow growing and they'll die of something else. The holy grail for men though, is to find a way of testing them which detects those prostate cancers which are aggressive and do need to be treated. And that's what researchers at Johns Hopkins University in Baltimore are looking at. And what they found is that men who have strong or more dense bones are at increased risk of aggressive prostate cancer. There is a decline in bone density in both men and women with age. However, in the men that later developed prostate cancer, they had less of a decline with age than normal men. For their age, they had denser bones. Yes, yes, and they had less decline over time. So what you're not able to say from this is, is cause and effect, is the fact that I mean, there has been some relationship between male hormones and enzymes related to male hormones and the incidence of prostate cancer, and male hormones do boost bone density. That's so true. Is, is this just a sign that you might have high male hormones? It, it could be a, a sign of a common factor like male hormones. There was another very interesting recent study showing that um, men with higher serum calcium levels had a higher risk of fatal prostate cancer. So you might have something either from the environment or your genes where your bone grows well and your prostate grows too well. Yes, that's possible. Yeah, good try, Jim. Apply the same hand. Just draw in in this hole. The implication is, according to this research, that bone density predicts high-risk prostate cancer 20 years before it's diagnosed. Yes, 20 years. Now, this does not mean that men should go out and get their bone density measured. What it does mean is that researchers have another clue to look deeper into causes. Stacey Loeb at Hopkins has also been investigating better ways to use a popular but controversial test to detect men at high risk of having a prostate tumour. It's called the Prostate Specific Antigen or PSA test. Yes, it's definitely a major subject of controversy in this country. I do believe that PSA testing is useful and that when performed correctly uh, with appropriate patient selection that it does save lives. Th those are big words. T t tell me what you mean. Appropriate patient selection done properly? What does that mean? Because in America and in Australia and in Europe and in Britain you've got GPs writing out forums every day of the week for their patients to have PSA tests and many of them are ending up in your, your operating theatres having radical prostatectomies, not knowing whether it's going to save their life. Right. Well, I think there's a lot of problems with patient selection. So if we instead focus PSA testing on younger men with a life expectancy of at least 10 years, I expect that we would see more benefit from it than screening elderly men in their 80s with many comorbid conditions. The importance of this is that if you wrongly identify men at risk, they might have unnecessary surgery, which could leave them with side effects and complications that dog them the rest of their lives. One of the threshold decisions here is whether a man should have his prostate biopsied in the first place. And many specialists to make that decision are using a man's whole risk of having prostate cancer, not just a single PSA measure. We just studied more than 17,000 men from the Medicare database who underwent prostate biopsy to determine the risk of hospitalization and serious infectious complications within 30 days. In fact, there does appear in this country and abroad to be an increasing risk of serious infectious complications after prostate biopsy, which makes this debate all the more relevant it becomes more important to pick the right people to screen and the right people to biopsy given that the risk of complications from biopsy ha has been increasing over time. Here we in fact usually rely more on changes over time than in the absolute value. It, at every step in this area it's evidence free. Nobody knows the right level to do right. a biopsy. Nobody knows how many uh, biopsies you need to do in a prostate. Some do eight, some do 10, some do 24. Yes, certainly there are many different practice patterns with respect to PSA testing and prostate cancer diagnosis. So what's your algorithm, as they say, what's your decision tree to know what, 
what, what to do and what to advise men? Well, the first step is deciding who needs to be screened and appropriate patient selection. So choosing men who are in the right age range and have a significantly long life expectancy to benefit from PSA testing. Once the decision has been made to proceed with screening, we use both the PSA and the digital rectal examination together. Since the combination of both tests has been shown to improve detection beyond one test alone. Family history is important too. And then what some people say you should do is watch the PSA test over a period of time to see what it's doing and whether it's rising quickly. But the experts even argue over that.